Here is a bit of an oddity. This is a knife that Gearbest sent to me as a free review sample. And what makes this unique is that it's a hybrid between a knife and scissors, or I guess shears is a better term in this case. So what you do is you flip this lever down and they open up, they're spring-loaded, and now you've got some shears. So this is quite an interesting concept. At first I had flashbacks from this thing here. This is the same kind of attempt. Scissors and turns into a knife of sorts. Now, this I reviewed a few years ago, and this is not a good take on that concept. This is not a good knife blade, and the way it's put together, this comes apart all the time. It's very easy. I mean, it's just really not, it's nothing that holds it in place, really, once you get to a certain point. And sometimes it gets weirdly stuck, too. So, this I was not a fan of. This one, on the other hand, seemed quite a bit more promising especially since it is made of high-quality material. You can see the type of steel that they're made of right here. It's D2, which is a very high-quality steel. And the handle scales are G10, which is nice. The way they're shaped is definitely very nice in the hand. You can see there's a bit of texturing here. And they've got these um, kind of finger grooves right there. Now, I don't think they really make much of a difference. I mean, depending on how you hold the grip, you might not really notice. Normally the fingers don't really rest in those, so it doesn't really matter that much. What really matters more is the way it's contoured here. The handle scales are sloped down and beveled, so that makes it nice and ergonomic. Let's see here, both sides. And you can see the attention to detail. Because those two blades need to overlap, of course, the tangs aren't perfectly lined up. So they fix that by making the top handle scale on this side thicker and thinner on the other side. And here it's vice versa. The top is thinner and the bottom is thicker. So it actually evens out. So you don't really feel this difference. It all lines up perfectly. It's, it's all nice and even and straight. The back of the blade has got these indentations here, which look pretty, and they also act similar to jimping. So you can put the thumb there right up, and it's got the bit of a finger troil here, which is all blunt. And you can rest your fingers there for you know, finer work and pushing like this. There's one thing that I wish was a little optimized, namely, you can see there's a gap between, and so if you grip the knife and you push, there's going to be a bit of a tendency to to pinch your skin. You can imagine right here, there's the gap, and if, if your finger is here and you pinch, I can't really show it, at least I don't think the camera will pick it up. Maybe you can see right here. So my skin is actually being pinched here. It's, n it's not a big deal, it doesn't actually hurt or anything. It's just, I mean, maybe, if you, if you just clamp down on it hard, but you know, it's just kind of a little bit irritating. So I would prefer if they were shaped more precisely to really make them rest against one another. So if this was all perfectly aligned and fitted so that it's all closed, that would be a lot better. Let's take a look at the edge. So this is pretty close to the way it came out of the box. I've messed around with it a little bit, tried it out but I haven't used it on a regular basis for a long time, so this is still reasonably close to the way it was. And you can see, nice and sharp. That's what I expect. It's not hair shaving sharp, but it's perfectly adequate for everyday tasks. And uh, as far as the shears are concerned, of course, I mean, it's not much to say. Of course, they are going to do the job. One thing I've noticed is that depending on how you use them, you might actually engage the lock sometimes. Of course, now, ah, there we go. So if you make sudden movements, you might sometimes engage it. Doesn't really happen right now. But, I mean, again, not a big deal. And you could even, if you wanted to, you could keep your finger here to make sure that it does not move. So then you can cut whatever 
and it's not going to lock on you. Let's check out some tougher materials. Here's an old leather belt. Doesn't go through in one cut, so you have to put a little bit of effort into it, but it doesn't. Cardboard tube. You definitely have to be pretty close to the center for that to be really effective. If you're out here, it doesn't really want to do it. There's a broken arrow shaft. There we go. Heavy duty rubber. No problem. And here's the super leather that one of my subscribers sent to me for testing. Now this stuff is incredibly tough and I don't have any hopes of being able to do much on this. <clears throat> yeah, it cuts in, but it doesn't really get very far. So it's not that heavy duty. You would essentially need tin snips or something for this. Uh, if I just take the knife blade itself, it cuts in, but it uh, really doesn't want to do much. And of course, one of the most likely applications, paper. No problem, obviously. And this is where it really comes in handy. Like, for example, if you want to cut, cut out a round shape, say, it's not really going to work with a regular knife. Whereas, of course, here you can. Very obvious. I don't really have to point that out. Here's some cardboard. First with the knife blade. No problem, of course. And shears. It comes in this nice Kydex sheath, which fits the knife really well. Keeps it in. And uh, it's got a belt clip right there. Or a pocket clip. Or you can carry this in a number of ways. Comes out easily. Now, this is one of the things that I'm not super happy with, actually, even though it is a nice sheath. Because one of my thoughts about this was this could be a really good choice in an area where people are very skeptical or afraid of knives. Now, this could potentially look a lot more like an inconspicuous tool. However, the way it's styled, I mean, it says tactical scissors. It's all black. It comes in this black tactical looking sheath. That kind of defeats that sort of purpose. I mean, when people see this, they're probably not going to think, oh yeah, it's just scissors. They, they, they would probably think, oh no, d dual knives. It's got some kind of evil mall ninja who's going to go on a killing spree or whatever. I mean, yeah, you know how some people are. So for carrying in public, you know, if, if you are in a knife friendly environment, it's not a problem. But otherwise, it might look a little scary, quote unquote, to some people, to the ignorant sheep. <laughs> so what of the practical value of this design? As with hybrids in general, it combines the functions of more than one tool, but it doesn't do so as well as each individual tool. In this case, you know, is it as good as a standard knife? No. As a knife, you've got this additional blade right here. You can see there in the cross section. So as you cut into material, this of course will provide a lot more resistance than a standard blade would. And as I said, there is the slight annoyance of the skin getting pinched here. And, you know, as far as ergonomics are concerned, I don't have a problem with it. Like, the, the grip feels really good, aside from the gap here. And it's the right kind of width. And this acts as a guard, which is nice. Now, I think it would be nice if you could separate the two. Not like this, because that's that's just too too flimsy, it doesn't really work properly. It's just annoying. But if, you know, they, I mean, you can remove the screw, of course, but it would be nice if there was some kind of quick detach mechanism that would allow you to separate them easily, but that still keeps them together solid because this would be perfectly usable. I mean, it's, it's a rather slim handle 
uh, on its own, but it was, this would work quite nicely. And then that would be quite a decent knife. Now, what I like about this is that it's got a regular knife grind. On this one here, they went with a chisel grind. You know, for to emphasize the, the scissor part more. And I'm not a fan of it. I mean, I know that there are really good knives with nice, sharp chisel grinds, but personally not my cup of tea. This is more of a standard knife blade and performs better as such as shears. Oh, I've got one particular issue with that. Namely, if you look at this angle here, it's very steep. It's actually not that far away from 90 degrees. This is obviously 90 degrees, and this is really not too far off. And that's at least a nice thing about this. It's got a much more acute angle, and so as shears, this actually potentially cuts better than this. Now I find that with these handles, I can exert a lot more pressure than with the scissor style handle, but you know, this of course limits quite a bit how well it cuts as shears. Also, I personally don't like the tactical style in this case, not just because it makes it less inconspicuous, but also because you know, the way these function, these two blades are constantly rubbing against each other. So you can already see this is rubbing off quite quickly. So this black is going to look pretty messy and rough in no time if you use them regularly. So I don't really see much of a point. It would be better to have just a, a standard satin finish. Uh, why bother with something that rubs off this quickly, like even more quickly than on, on a regular knife, or even on a camping knife. So I don't quite see the point there. You know, maybe if different colors were available for the handle scales, like, you know, blue and green and red and whatnot, that would make a bit more sense to me for this particular design. Now, I still like it. It's still an interesting hybrid, and it's a pretty good attempt at doing hybrid. It's, in fact, one of the best I've seen, because quite often these combination tools don't work too well, unless it's a dedicated multi-tool like a Leatherman, for example. That's a different story, but these, you know, let's grab two different tools and slap them together and create a new thing. That often doesn't turn out very well. Unfortunately, in this case, I think it turned out quite well, actually. And of course, it wouldn't be as convenient to carry a knife of this size and a pair of scissors or shears together. This just makes it a little easier. And you know, scissors you can use quite often. There are plenty of situations where that comes in handy. Of course, whenever you do need them, you can always improvise and use a knife instead. So it's not like a major issue. And oh no, I wish I had my tactical shears on me right now. But, you know, I still like the idea. I like having the extra function without compromising each of them too much. And finally, I can say that the quality is quite appropriate for the price. So this is available for 43 US dollars and 43 cents. And for that, you get a said D2 tool steel and G10 handle scaled really quite remarkable fit and finish overall. There are no gaps here anywhere, aside from the obvious gap in between the handles, but you know, the handle scales are perfectly fitted and everything is just flawless. There's no sign of, you know, cheap craftsmanship, so to speak. And I have to appreciate that. So in conclusion, is this better than a standard knife? No. Is it just a gimmicky novelty item with no practical use? No, absolutely not. It is still a sensical tool. It is a compromise between two tools. It's not as good as either of those on their own, but it's still quite decent at either purpose. Of course, the link will be in the video description down below. Hope you liked the review and thanks for watching.